Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to come here, and I would like to thank the organizing committee for, for giving me this opportunity to talk about nutritional modulation of the antioxidant capacities in poultry. And I would like to start from this slide, actually for you to understand that we are living in this dangerous world of free radicals. And Professor Botti already addressed the question that yes, free radicals are produced in biological systems, and we need to remember that they are produced in physiological conditions, and we are talking about at least 20 billion of free radicals which are produced in every cell every day in physiological conditions. And in stress conditions, this production goes up. And therefore, we need this kind of umbrella. We means chickens, pigs, humans, everybody needs a protection. And this umbrella we call the antioxidant protection. And antioxidant protection is built from antioxidants which are coming from the feed ingredients and feed supplements. And uh, yes, those free radicals which are produced in nature, what are they? We, simply we can call them activated molecules of oxygen. Why activated? Oxygen is very important for the metabolism. But once the molecule of oxygen is activated, it is becoming very, very reactive and it can damage lipids, including membranes, proteins, and DNA. And the damaging effect of those free radicals is very important. And what we need to remember that there is a plenty of different antioxidants in the body, and all those antioxidants are working as a team. So this is a teamwork, and in this team, Every member of the team has its own job to do. This is my book from 2002, where we described this team first. Therefore, if you look at this team, antioxidant system, I called vitamin E headquarters of antioxidant defense. Carotenoids, more than 750 of those in nature, communicating services of antioxidant defense. Flavonoids, antioxidant police. Vitamin C, special forces of antioxidant defense. And finally, selenium, chief executive of antioxidant defense. And hopefully at the end of my presentation, you will understand why I put selenium so high in hierarchy of all antioxidants. And finally, there is a ministry of defense inside of the cell. This means the gene expression, transcription factors, which are responsible for synthesis of their own antioxidants. And what we need also to remember is that there is a very delicate balance between antioxidants and prooxidants in every cell and in, in body itself. And depending which part of the balance goes down, we are talking about antioxidant protection and maintenance of good health. Alternatively, if right side of the balance goes down due to high level of prooxidant stress conditions or just low antioxidant potential, then we'll be talking about lipid peroxidation, protein oxidation, and development of different diseases. In fact, from medical sciences, we know today that most of human diseases at various stages of their development are associated with overproduction of free radicals. And now come back to poultry. If we look at the poultry production, we have plenty of different stresses during a poultry production system. And these stresses can be divided in four different categories, including nutritional stresses, environmental stresses, technological stresses, internal stresses. And uh, our commercial poultry production designed in such a way that it's practically impossible to avoid those stresses. And what we need also to know that at the molecular level, practically all stresses are related to overproduction of free radicals. It does matter which stress we are talking about, that nutritional stress, environmental stress, or internal stress. If we look at the level of mitochondria, if we look at the level of the cell, we will see the overproduction of free radicals and impose oxidative stress. Okay, we have feed, we have plenty of different compounds on feed which actually possess antioxidant activity including vitamin E, carotenoids, selenium, carnitine, taurine, vitamin C, flavonoids, synthetic antioxidants. We, we can continue this list. We know that, for example, these first three should come uh, from the feed because they are not produced in the body, but uh, carnitine, taurine, vitamin C can be synthesized in the body. However, in stress 
conditions, the synthesis of these antioxidants can be compromised, and therefore, in many cases, in stress conditions, supplementation then with the diet could have a positive response. And today, we will be talking about nutritional modulation of the antioxidant system. And I, I look at the literature and decided to choose the actually embryonic development of the chicken as a model to show how antioxidant system can be modulated through nutrition. And this system is very sensitive because if you look at the fatty acid profile of the chicken egg, we are talking about at least 18% of polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are very sensitive to oxidation. But during embryonic development, this percentage of polyunsaturated fatty acid increased dramatically. So all, almost 50% of lipids in, new, in the liver of newly hatched chick are unsaturated. Therefore, they are very sensitive to oxidation, and the protection of, of, against oxidation by antioxidants is a key. And, uh, we have been developing this idea for many years that the hatching process itself is an oxidative stress. So this paper we published in 1996, this one 20 years later, and the issue is still there. It's proven today, yes, during hatching process, when you have high temperature, high humidity, the oxidative stress is taking place, and prevention of that oxidative stress at the time of hatching could be a way to improve hatchability, to improve chicken uh, viability post-hatch, including the gut development and uh, uh, immune system development. So when we look at the, uh, this model of uh, modulation of antioxidant system. We have antioxidants in the diet, then we have breeder or lane hen, which actually consumes this diet, and this antioxidant come into her, and then they are transferred to egg yolk and some to egg white, and during embryonic development, embryo is able to synthesize their own antioxidants, like antioxidant enzymes. And finally, they build this antioxidant system, which is responsible for maintaining growth immunity, for maintaining health. And then let's start from vitamin E. Vitamin E, my favorite one, because my first publication on vitamin E was in 1981, and the last one this year. So my line working with vitamin E all the life, and we know today that vitamin E is a major antioxidant in biological membranes. There is plenty of vitamin E in different feed ingredients, but the major source of vitamin E, of course, is the premix. And this study, what we showed here, that when during embryonic development, vitamin E accumulation in the liver up to the point of hatching is considered as adaptive mechanism, the adaptive mechanism to deal with that stress of hatching. And it's true for chicken, turkey, duck, geese, all the same, the highest level at hatching, but after hatch, for the first two weeks, the concentration of vitamin E decreased more than 20 times. That's exactly the place where oxidative stress is taking place. How can we modulate it? Yeah, if we include high level of vitamin E in the layer diet, we can increase vitamin E concentration dramatically more than 10 times. What also important, when we excluded vitamin E from the diet, for after a few days, vitamin E dropped very quickly, which means there is no vitamin E reserves in layer's body. And we also found a direct relationship between vitamin E in the egg yolk and vitamin E in the liver of newly hatched chick, which means vitamin E quite effectively transferred from the egg yolk into embryonic tissue during embryonic development. And finally, finally we prove the point. When we use high levels of, of vitamin E supplementation, we increase vitamin E concentration in the egg yolk, in embryonic tissues, and in, in the tissues of day-old chicks, you can see lipid peroxidation decreased uh, practically in all tissues. Therefore, the conclusion is, yes, by including in the diet high level of vitamin E, we can modulate antioxidant system. The second one is uh, a group of compounds called carotenoids, which, as I mentioned, more than 750 compounds in nature. They divide it into carotens and xanthophils. And for us, most important this part, xanthophils. And we did a research showing that by inclusion of the contaxantin, and the contaxantin, one of those carotenoids which most easily, most effectively transfer from the feed to the egg, we actually can substantially increase concentration of contaxantin in the, in the egg yolk. And 
That's a picture. So by using contact sentin, you can go from yellow to red. What is also important, look here. There is a direct relationship between the color of egg yolk and shank of those cheeks. And this is two weeks post hatch. You still see uh, effect of maternal diet on carotenoids in those cheeks. Uh, when we look further, contaxantin in the liver of the old cheeks, the same picture, which means contaxantin is effectively transferred from the egg into the embryonic tissue and tissues of post hard chickens. And finally, by increasing the level of contaxantin, we can decrease, uh, uh, decrease lipid oxidation, which means the, by using contaxantin, we can modulate our antioxidant system and can improve resistance of tissues to oxidative stress. And also important, this paper came from China showing that by, by using contaxantin in the diet, we can also increase activity of superoxid dismutase. Superoxid dismutase is nothing to do with contaxantin. This means that there is a interactions between different antioxidants in biological uh, systems. We published a couple of reviews uh, showing how contaxantin can be used in poultry industry, but Looking at natural situation, you can see this dramatic difference between housed and feral birds and ducks and, and geese. And if you look in the wild nature, carotenoids play a very important signaling function. And finally, finally we come into my favorite one, to selenium. And today we are talking about uh, celebrating 200 years of selenium discovery by Swedish chemist, chemist Berzelius. And today we know that selenium is a part of a range of selenoproteins which are playing important role in many physiological functions. In this paper, paper review, we try to actually com uh, combine uh, or divide uh, selenoproteins in different groups, those which are participating in antioxidant defense, those which are responsive for redox regulation of gene expression, those which are involved in thyroid metabolism and maintaining sperm structure and integrity. And what is known today is that up to 50%, half, up, more than half of all those selenoproteins known, we know today 25 selenoproteins in poultry, are involved directly or indirectly into antioxidant defenses. And I have been developing for many years organic selenium concept because what was shown in our research that the form of selenium sometimes more important than the concentration of selenium and the assimilation of selenium from the diet is a very important issue. And uh, organic selenium means we look what the form of selenium in feed ingredients. So any feed ingredients we take, maize, uh, soya, uh, wheat, in all those feed ingredients selenium is in organic form, mainly as a selenomethionine, but we are supplemented birds by premixes still using sodium selenide, and these two forms are very different. So this is my Selena book, which is 974 pages, and uh, it took me almost 1,000 pages to prove the point that organic selenium is a major form of selenium and the most effective form of selenium. Then it was another book, 2008. This is a chapter uh, last year, and this is a new book which is coming, and the message is the same. The form of selenium is a key for success. And uh, let's look at some results. This paper we published in British Poultry Science from the trial we run at the Scottish Agricultural College. So what we use, uh, semi-synthetic diet, reasonably low in, in selenium, commercial diet, and two different levels of organic selenium supplementation. What we showed? We showed that by using organic selenium in the diet, we can substantially increase selenium concentration in albumin and selenium concentration in egg yolk. And this is a liver, liver of newly hatched chick. The same relationship, the same as you saw with vitamin E, the same as you saw with carotenoids. Yes, selenium is effectively transferred during embryonic development from the egg uh, and white into tissues of newly hatched chick. As a result of transfer that selenium, we saw significant increase in activity of glutathione peroxidase in newly hatched chick and in chick five days post hatch as a result of increased antioxidant defenses, you can see here uh, decreased susceptibility to oxidation. So lipid peroxidation went down. Therefore, in 2000, we showed, yes, by using organic selenium, 
In the diet of the breeders, it is possible to improve antioxidant defenses by increasing expression of various selenoprotein. In our cases, it was glutathione peroxidase. And this paper actually published 15 years later after our paper. What they did here, uh, they actually used the diet which was almost the same as ours, basal diet, 004. They supplemented two, diff two different sources of selenium, sodium selenide and selenomethionine at point 15. And what they did here, most important part, the thermal stress. Because when we're talking about antioxidant, the protection they provided is extremely important in stress conditions. The higher the stress, the more importance of nutritional modulation of antioxidant system, the more importance of antioxidant. And in this case, it's, uh, we are talking about selenium. So the stress was 17 days of incubation. Eggs were placed for six hours at 39.5 degrees. What did they show? They show the same as in our paper, yes, the lipid oxida peroxidation goes down. And you can see here different letters between sodium selenide and selenomethionine, which means a significantly uh, better uh, effect of uh, uh, organic selenium. But more important, this one, protein oxidation. Because the protein oxidation, that's something which we do not pay much attention for many years. We know that lipid oxidation is bad. We know we have plenty of technique to assess lipid oxidation. That's why we were talking exclusively about this one for many years. But today we're talking more and more about protein oxidation and negative consequences of protein oxidation or for immunity, for gut health, for many other parameters. Therefore, uh, one more point, vitamin E and other classical antioxidants cannot affect protein oxidation. And that's a bad thing. But here you can clearly see that using organic selenium, it's a, po a possibility to improve stability of proteins in stress conditions. Again, one more paper came from China showing that actually inclusion of organic selenium as a selenomethionine improves superoxide dismutase activity in muscles of newly hatched chick. Again, showing the same, that there is an interactions between different antioxidants in biological systems. Okay, we published uh, recently three reviews uh, which were addressing selenium for breeders, selenium for sows, and selenium for boars. And all those reviews confirming the same idea that organic selenium is more efficiently used by animals, by poultry, by pigs, by boars, and organic selenium can help to improve antioxidant defenses. Finally, I told you organic selenium is good, but let's look how it works in the body. If we understand how it works, that it will be easier to explain plenty of those results which are already published. So we have selenium in feed ingredients. And there are plenty of different forms of selenium there, including selenomethionine, selenocysteine, selenoglutathione, selenopeptides, and this list can be continued. Because at least in yeast, it was shown that there are more than 50 different organic compounds then we have selenium supplements. Today we can supplement diet with various forms of selenium, including selenomethionine, zinc selenomethionine, hydroxy selenomethionine, selen yeast selenomethionine, selenide, selenate, and other forms of selenium. Now, if the bird consumes this feed, all these forms of selenium come into the gut. In the gut, there is some hydrolysis taking place, which means zinc selenomethionine will be converted into selenomethionine. Hydroxy selenomethionine, at least part of it, can also be converted into selenomethionine. But the absorption efficiency is not 100%. Therefore, we will lose some selenium via excretion from uh, via feces and urine. And what is important now? Important point is that all those first forms of selenium from the gut come into the liver because the liver is a major organ for metabolism of selenium, where metabolic changes are taking place. Therefore, you can see here selenide, selenate, selenocysteine, selenomethionine, and other forms of selenium come into the liver to the metabolism. And here, important point, selenomethionine organic form of selenium chemically is very similar to methionine. And many enzymatic systems in the body cannot distinguish what is what. 
Therefore, selenomethylene can be non-specifically incorporated into newly synthesized proteins. Therefore, selenomethylene can go to amino acid pool and non-specifically incorporated in muscles building selenium reserves in the body. So this part is the most important to understand that organic selenium in the form of selenomethionine can go one way to the liver to be metabolized and go to amino acid pool to be incorporated into proteins and build selenium reserves. Okay, in the liver, all those forms of selenium will be destroyed and converted in the common product hydrogen selenide. It does matter, selenocysteine, selenomethionine, selenite, or selenate, all of them will be converted in this product. And then, from hydrogen selenide, selenocysteine will be synthesized. So here, important point, selenocysteine is a feed, and selenocysteine, this one, are completely different selenocysteines. Only newly synthesized selenocysteine can be incorporated in those 25 selenoproteins. Okay, and those selenoproteins, as I mentioned already, are participating in antioxidant defenses. So, until here, the picture more or less clear, and the most important part coming here, in stress conditions. That's what I told you, that in stress conditions, the importance of antioxidant goes up. So, in stress conditions, what's happened? The physiological response to stress is a catabolism of proteins. So protein catabolism, that's something which happens in any stress conditions. So during protein catabolism, some selenomethionine will be released and converted to the same hydrogen selenide, and eventually we will have in increased expression of selenoproteins because we supply more selenium and giving the opportunity to selenoproteins to be expressed. Then we have antioxidant defenses goes up, and we have maintaining growth, development, productive and reproductive performance in stress conditions. So that's the major understanding today, that building selenium reserves in the body by organic selenium in the form of selenomethionine is a major mechanism of advantages of organic selenium in poultry production. And uh, if we look further, now what we need to do, we need to choose the right form of selenium because we need to build reserve. The higher the reserve, the better the protection. In fact, building these reserves in the body, it's like an insurance policy. So in order to have good insurance, in order to have a insurance which is a comprehensive one, you need to build selenium reserves. And if you, if you look at these two publications, when actually make a comparison between sodium selenide, seleno yeast, and hydroxy selenomethionine, uh, the, the biggest response, the best response, well, was from hydroxy selenomethionine. And more recent paper published this year, still showing the same, that hydroxy selenomethionine in the diet of, of the layers, actually in the diets of broilers the same, uh, actually building selenium reserves more efficiently. So this is a significant difference in both types of muscles. So now, what we can conclude from this one? We have three generations of selenium supplements. The first generation was sodium selenide and selenate, which came in 1970s. In 1970s, we, where scientists still did not realize much that there are different forms of selenium, so selenium was considered like a mineral. In 1970s, there was a big problem of selenium deficiency, global problem. It was necessary to solve that problem, and sodium selenide did a good job solve the problem of selenium deficiency. But today, we are not talking about selenium deficiency in animal production. We are talking about meeting requirement. We are talking about precise nutrition, and we need those tools to deal with this one. Therefore, the second generation of seleno supplements, including seleno yeast and pure selenomethane. So seleno yeast did a very good job for many years. Uh, now myself was promoted selenomethane, seleno yeast. And we know today that seleno yeast is good, but there is a, one question to answer. The active compound of seleno yeast is selenomethane. And in the yeast selenomethane, comprising only from 50 to 70% of total selenium. 
What about other forms of serenity? What about serenity stains and other forms? In my scheme I showed you, they are not different from sodium selenide. It's only selenomethane which gives the value. Therefore, when you are talking about uh, selenium yeast, yes, that value first is from 50 to 70 percent, and secondly, it's quite variable because the technology of selenium yeast production is not able today to guarantee the exact percentage of selenomethane. Okay, what about pure selenomethane? We can use pure selenomethane. Yes, it's a nice product, but there is one no but the stability of the product, because chemical selenomethane is not very stable. Therefore, when you're talking about feed treatment, especially heat treatment of feed, you can lose some selenomethane. This means that when you're using it, you're uncertain what's the level of selenomethane left at the time when feed is consumed. Therefore, the third generation of the selenium supplement, hydroxyselenomethane, actually combine advantages of both, advantage of selen selenium yeast as a stable product and advantage of pure selenomethane as a concentrated product. So now, a couple of minutes more about other antioxidants. About selenium, you know why I put it into category of uh, uh, chief executive. What about flavonoids? That's the most fashionable part. There are hundreds and hundreds of papers claiming that flavonoids and plant extracts and polyphenolics are good antioxidants. Believe it or not, most recent research, including my, my, research, uh, my review paper, shows that flavonoids are not antioxidants. They are not antioxidant, traditional antioxidant, like vitamin E in the body. Because you can have very high concentration of those flavonoids in the diet, in the gut, but very tiny amount in the blood and almost known in target tissues. Therefore, those concentrations of flavonoids which were tested in tubes more than a thousand times higher than those which we have in target tissues. But there is still effects of flavonoids. I'm not saying that flavonoids na are not effective. I'm saying that the mechanism which was described for them is wrong because flavonoids today are known to regulate transcription factors like NRF2 and some others. Therefore, there is a need for more research to understand how flavonoids can affect antioxidant system, how they modulate antioxidant system. And uh, one more point, those who try to replace vitamin E with those flavonoids, they put cart before horses. It's too early to do so because we still do not understand exactly how they work. Ascorbic acid, yeah, it's also important antioxidant. It's synthesized in the body, but in stress conditions like heat stress, supplementation of extra ascorbic acid could be beneficial, especially when it's supplemented with water. Uh, carnitine, well, I consider carnitine today as a new entrant into antioxidant family because it's proven today, as is our three recent reviews on carnitine, what we prove the point that carnitine is effective in maintaining mitochondria integrity. So instead of catching radicals like vitamin A doing, they regulate or maintain mitochondria in stress conditions, preventing extra free radical uh, production. And therefore, the supplementation of carnitine in stress conditions could be one way, uh, another way to improve antioxidant defenses. Taurine, that's something surprising because the taurine is non-essential amino acid. Yes, for cats, uh, it's uh, widely used because cats are not synthesized it, but most animals synthesize taurine. But in stress conditions, again, especially in aging animals, the synthesis of taurine goes down, and extra taurine supplementation could be beneficial. And taurine actually has uh, uh, the similar effect on mitochondria like carnitine doing. And finally, antioxidants and antioxidant defense mechanisms. How I see them today? I put here uh, 12 major mechanisms. And the first one, decrease of localized oxygen concentration. So once co oxygen concentration down, then of course free radical production is down. Decrease activity of prooxidant enzymes. In the cells there are plenty of, of various enzymes which are responsive for free radical production. And once activity of those enzymes is down, more or less free radicals product produced. Chain breaking by scavenging inter intermediate radicals binding metal ions and uh, metal chelating, induction of various transcription factors, including NRF2, NRF-kappa-B, and some others, and additional synthesis of antioxidant enzymes, 
The composition of pro, uh, peroxides by converting them into non-radical, non-toxic products improve efficiency of electron transport chain in mitochondria, especially in stress conditions, preventing various damages to mitochondria and preventing excess of free radical production. Antioxidant recycling mechanism, including vitamin E recycling, this is why very important because in many cases the recycling of vitamin E is even more important than concentration itself. Apoptosis activation and removal of terminally damaged cells and redox signaling and vitagene activation. And um, that's our last three papers uh, published on, on Vita genes in poultry production. Vita genes, those genes which are responsive for adaptation to stress. And that's something to have a look more specifically how the regulation of Vita genes can help. And finally, how I see today stress and adaptation. Because when we are talking about modulation of antioxidant system, the whole uh, the whole idea of modulation is actually common that we can improve adaptability of animals to stress. We can improve adaptability, which means in stress conditions we lose less productive and reproductive performance. So if we look here, we have stress. In stress conditions, the concentration of glutathione goes down, and this will be the signal to activate Vita genes. Activation of Vita genes will be responsive for additional synthesis of antioxidant enzymes, including superoxide dismutase, for expression of salina proteins, for expression of heat shock proteins, sirtuins, and some other active molecules. And then this will give an opportunity to improve antioxidant defenses. Here you also need to have good vitamin E recycling, selenium reserves in, in the body, some cofactors. But generally speaking, if you look here, this is a self-regulating system. This is a system of adaptation to stress until you cross this red line. You cross red line because the stress is too high or antioxidant defenses are too low. Once you cross red line, we are talking about apoptosis. It's not reversal anymore. We are talking about apoptosis, immunosuppression, decreased productive and reproductive performance. Of course, transcription factor NRF2 and F kappa B are also involved here because uh, NRF2 is responsible actually for synthesis of those antioxidants. And the other side, NF kappa B is responsible for inflammation and synthesis of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So looking at this scheme and looking and trying to address what we're talking about, about modulation of antioxidant system, we have choice. We have choice of various antioxidants which are coming, which can come with the diet. We have vitamin E, we have carotenoids, we have selenium, we have other antioxidants. And it's a headache for nutritionists to find the optimal combination which can give the best results. Thank you very much for your attention.